So, welcome. Thanks for coming. And uh, I'm going to show you how to build uh, a very quick Android application that gets some, some very uh, basic Android development concepts um, shown to you so that you could uh, hopefully go away from this and, and have an ap a better idea of where to start building your own applications for Android. So we've got about 90 minutes. We're going to get just kind of an overview of how the Android platform um, stacks up, what uh, some different pieces are, and then we'll look a little bit around Eclipse and uh, some of the things that the uh, the Android uh, plug into the IDE uh, gives you. And uh, then we'll build a quick two-screened Android application, and we'll hopefully have enough time for ample time for questions. Oh, and Tony, this is Beth. I um I forgot to mention this in my little intro, but you had reminded me to mention for people who attended Tony's free pilot session on Android last fall, um, he's going to be building the same app during this session, but the, the app that he builds starting next week in the remaining, remaining five sessions is completely new. So if you attended before, a lot of this may look familiar to you, but come back next week because it will be all new information next week. Yep, and for the, the remaining five classes after this one. So we'll be getting a lot more in-depth than we did last time. Okay, so as they've already mentioned, my name's Tony. Uh, I work for a company called Effective UI, and I get to build cool applications for uh, lots of different platforms, Android being one of them. And uh, I really got interested in Android development early because I was scared about the process of getting up to speed with iPhone development, although... I've since surmounted that fear. Um, but Android seems to me to be a little bit more interesting right off the bat because it was open source, and I could get in and check out what actually was going on inside the SDK, uh, the framework classes and stuff, and I like that. I like to know that I can do that when I'm when I'm learning how to develop for a platform. And, of course, the, the, the gadget factor is definitely one reason I like build, building for Android as well. Again, we want to keep this nice and informal and... and, and uh, and student driven as far as you have questions and and we'll tell you just just uh, let us have the questions and we'll tell you when to back off if we want to get through anything but uh, especially if you want to know anything about some comparative sort of uh, development stories if anybody's interested in talking about differences between these other platforms and Android I'll, I'll try to help out there I can answer most from the standpoint of, of, of iPhone um, since I've done that. Okay, cool. So we've got some people that are that are definitely into the mobile space as far as development goes. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about Android for those who are unfamiliar with the platform. Uh, a few years ago, uh, Google started something called the Open Handset Alliance, and you can go read more information about that at the uh, web address there, openhandsetalliance.com. Uh, at the time I wrote these slides, there was over 40 members. I think there may be more now. And that was basically a sort of a consortium of device manufacturers and the people who make the hardware, the people who make the software and the networks. And uh, Google got them all together to kind of get um, their, their idea of an open handset platform, uh, open smartphone platform that they called Android out there so that people could start to rely, uh, by people I mean developers, could start to rely on uh, there being a platform out there that they could develop for that uh, would hit a lot of devices and users would start to get, users of the de of the devices would start to get an idea of uh, how, uh, kind of a, a an, an experience that they could rely on on a lot of different devices as far as the operating system goes. And of course Google would, uh, would uh, um, push forward the idea of open software, which is important to them as well. So that's kind of where this all started. You might have, It might have even been around three years ago when that first uh, sort of a demo of Android, the, the nascent Android platform was shown, and that got a lot of people excited. And the goal for them, again, is ubiquity. So there's a couple devices here that uh, are already out there, and there's a few more that aren't listed here, but the idea is that soon there's going to be a lot of devices and you'll be able to, as a developer, take advantage of that ubiquity to, to develop for all sorts of different platforms. As we said, it's an open source framework, so you can go get the source right now if you want. If you want to, go to uh, source.android.com and you can get the actual framework code and even more, um, 
for uh, to, to kind of figure out what's going on inside there. And I always recommend to get in and, and understand the frameworks that you're using, not just how to develop with the components, but also what's going on inside there, because there's a lot to learn about the right ways to do things, uh, interesting new tricks and tips in code. Um, and you can also, of course, get the SDK, which is what you use to, to build build the applications, and the IDE for Android runs in Eclipse. And, of course, you have all got that set up, right? Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully if they do, and if they don't, we'll definitely have it set up next for next week, I hope. Yep. So I actually, I actually have a question. Uh, one person asked, can you use NetBeans? I do not know if you can use NetBeans, but you can definitely use NetBeans to write Java, and everything is Java, so you can get the the uh, the jars for the SDK um, all set up so that your Java requirements are, are, uh, are covered. And then you could use the SDK from the command line or something like that, maybe even hook in some scripts from NetBeans uh, to make things happen, like copying up the the, the application to the to the uh, device. And also compilation. Compilation is different. So we're going to get into that in just a second. Um, so let me just go, go ahead with that. So um, you're going to need to compile through the SDK, and here's why. Let's talk a little bit about the platform. So it's uh, Android is built on a Linux kernel, a very small um, standard set of software um, components that that are nice and lightweight and uh, ready to be built on. And then on top of that, there are a bunch of native libraries that are specific to the device that they're running on that, that give you um, some sure assurity that you'll be able to do things like run video on any of the platforms. Those are the, the bridges between the your code and the and the device the needs of the device that it's running on and there's uh, a few things there some uh, some libraries for doing 2d or 3d graphics uh, SQLite for some local database storage the browser the webkit browser um, things like that are in the native library category and now here's that point that I just made about uh, compilation uh, you were writing Java code to run on these Android devices but um, it's not um, compiled down. Uh, actually, I'm not quite sure about the, how the compilation process goes. It may be compiled to Java bytecode and then cross-compiled, or it may go straight from uh, Java. I'm not sure. But in any case, it's not Java bytecode. Um, that, that is the final destination. It's actually compiled into uh, a more efficient, a more uh, lightweight uh, bytecode for running on devices, and that's... Uh, Run inside of a virtual machine that's uh, called Dalvik, which is which is the uh, ancestral Icelandic home of of the engineer who who wrote this this uh, this different VM and this approach for uh, running Java on on more on on devices where you can't uh, you don't you can't have uh, you know Java hogging as much memory as it's as it's uh, notorious for. So that Dalvik VM that there's an, there's another compilation process to get the bytecode ready to run on that VM. So that's why you need to compile through the SDK. Uh, on top of all that, that runtime is the Android framework, which uh, Google has written. Is there a question? Nope, I was moving something, sorry. Okay, that's fine. Um, that Android framework gives you access to some software that uh, the user, that's already ready to go for the user. So there's things like the contact. Um, uh, Actually, no, that's the system app. That's the next one. Reading ahead a little bit. But um, that framework gives you some uh, classes that you'll use to compose your applications together using the, the common framework that all um, of the software on the Android devices, even the system apps that ship with your phone, like the contacts, uh, the phone dialer, all those things use the framework just like you do. So you're writing applications just like just like the uh, Android developers do, and they have access to the same tools that you do. There's no there's no special private APIs like there are on the iPhone that you can kind of hack in and figure out how to use, and then may get your your hand slapped by Apple or your 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 app won't get deployed. You get access to the same system tools as, as the Google developers do, which is kind of cool. And then, of course, sitting alongside those are your applications. So that is kind of how the, the framework um, breaks down from top to bottom. And um, 
composing your application, there, let's, let's go through a little bit of, app, of uh, vocabulary now that we've kind of seen how the platform stacks up. Now uh, the different parts of your application that you need to know to build your applications. Uh, let's look at those. Um, one thing that you uh, build your application out of are just the, the, the resources like uh, pictures and, and sounds, maybe some media, things like that that you uh, want to use inside of your application or you know pictures could be used for skinning or uh, making your application look a certain way there could be some text like maybe some legal text you want to pull in um, uh, or any of the uh, in fact any of the strings in your application we're going to see it's automatically set up for uh, for internationalization and localization and the way that's done is everything is compiled in this sort of initial compilation phase um, Compiled meaning uh, there's actually a class created called R that um, references all of those resources for you so that you kind of have a global resource locator type of a pattern um, through this class called R where you can get a, ha a handle on any of those resources in a, in a kind of a conventional manner so you don't have to go looking up strings off of the file system or things like that. So when we talk about resources we're talking about um, things that you're going to pull in uh, through this class called R and those can be of many different types. Another important concept is the activity. So an activity is basically um, kind of a controller in a model view controller pattern which hopefully you've heard of it's kind of uh, the uh, the uh, sort of fundamental pattern that's used in in a GUI uh, programming where you're building things with a user interface the uh, the model of course sort of models um, whatever system you're trying to build uh, and the view is what uh, gets shown to the user but the controller is what uh, what uh, controls interactions between those two and gets data from the model, puts it on the view, takes input from the view, sort of makes the whole app run. Uh, kind of in the controller class in, in, in the Android framework is an activity. An activity can basically be thought of as controlling one screen's worth of data. So when you see a screen you're probably seeing one activity. Now intents are uh, kind of like the verb. That's kind of like how I like to think of them. Another way to think of them may be like a command pattern if you're if you're used to that. It's basically a way of telling the framework that you want to do something. So I want to open up another screen in my application. I want to open up the dialer application and call a number or, or uh, allow the user to call a number. Or I want to uh, use another application as a service, something like that. That The intent is what you do what you uh, construct and, and send around to make the framework uh, do what you want. And uh, we'll be running to those in a little bit. So um, those are some a uh, little bit of uh, fundamental concepts kind of uh, that uh, we'll be going over here in more concrete form in a second. But are there any questions so far um, kind of about the platform or, uh, or any of these in initial concepts? Yeah, we do have um, a, a quite a few questions. A couple of them are related to the clarifications on installing. So uh, when people go to download Ganymede, is there a specific version of Ganymede that they should download? And I have been telling people Java, but is there, more, is there a more specific version? Oh, well, so that you get presented with, like, are you a Java right. developer or are you a uh, enterprise mm -hmm. developer? Just the Java version is fine. The Java version. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, any modern eclipse, any of those will actually work. It's just more. It'll be a longer download, and there'll be extra stuff that you don't uh, theoretically need. Okay. One person also asked um, when you go back to screen sharing, if you could show how to check which version of Eclipse and Android SDK are currently installed. If okay. there's a way to check that. Sure. So when we jump back into okay. Um, one person also asked, what is the comparable Java version that's used in the Android VM? Uh, I think that would be 1.6. Um, so it's Java 1.6 in the Android? Uh, well, you'll, you're able to use Java 1.6, um, what, uh, what do you call it, like um, SDK or API features. Like obviously 1.5 features are are supported so you can do things like annotations which weren't available before that. Um, 
I'm kind of drawing a blank on what a good uh, example of a difference between 1.6 and 1.5 are, but 1.6 is, you, you can code to 1.6. Okay. All right. Um, and then, um, let me see, there was, a, there was a question in here about, let me see if I can find it. Um, somebody said, Java compiles for JVM. One can even decompile Java code. Is that also possible with compiled Android apps? I think so. I don't, I haven't looked into decompiling an Android app from, from the Dalvik bytecode. Um, of course, there's more to it than just the bytecode. There's also the resources that get shipped along and maybe optimized, um, like they byte align the, the images or something like that so that the images are, are optimized for display on the device. Uh, but I haven't worked with any decompilation software. I'm, I'm, sure, okay. I'm sure somebody's looked into it, though. Okay. And if you download Android 2.1, does that include 1.5, or do you need to download 1.5 explicitly if you want to target the, the older versions? Yeah, you'll need to get the 1.5 SDK to, uh, to uh, so you can compile your application against that. Otherwise, you'll be, you know, compiled against system classes that may not be there. Okay. Uh, possibly. So, yeah, you need, you'll need all that. I'll, I kinda, I'll, I'll do a little quick tour of, the, of, uh, of where you update that stuff in Eclipse. Okay, great. Um, do we have any questions, other questions from the chat room that uh, the moderators want to pass along before we go on? Um, we're having some questions regarding uh, the native code compilation, if you can use GTK Plus uh, directly with your job, uh, Android apps. Um, so <laughs> I, I don't have any experience with GTK. I'm not, I, I didn't know you could do anything with Java with GTK. I thought it was a way to write sort of system independent stuff in C, but maybe I'm way off on that. I don't know. I, I'm not sure how to answer that I one. Think, I think they're looking at uh, trying to hack around and going right to native instead of using the Java oh. APIs to get a little bit low, lower level, like for rendering. Ah, well then you want oh, to look, yes. first of all, you shouldn't be in this class. And <laughs> second of all, <laughs> second of all, um, you want to look into the NDK, which is on Google's site as well. If you just search Google for uh, Android NDK, there is a native development kit which lets you write, I believe, C++ and uh, get access to very device-specific things. So that may be something you'd want to look into. And a lot of these questions are probably answered on the developer.android.com slash SDK site as well. So if we don't get to all of your your questions about installs and SDK versions, there, there's probably a lot of good information there. That's right. Okay, so right. let's take a look at what we're going to be building today. Um, so as we build this application, you're going to learn your way a little bit around Eclipse, and I'll kind of take some extra time to show some of the uh, answers to the questions that we've just had. Um, I'm going to show you kind of the anatomy of an Android project. We're going to build two very simple views, and we're going to build two very simple activities to control the views, and then use an intent to open one of the views from the first view, and hopefully learn a little bit about getting around an eclipse as well. So I firmly believe that you can never have too many flashlight applications. Um, there's a lot of them out there, but we can always build another one. So let's what we're going to build is a, a flashlight application. And actually, let me flip right over to the uh, emulator. Is everybody able to see my emulator? Should be a red screen yes, with keypad and stuff. Okay, this is the Android emulator. Hello from the so, Android emulator. So it's flashlight, a flashlight application, the new Hello World? Yes, <laughs> I, I think. I mean, I, you could still do a Hello World, I'm sure, but this is so much more fun, right? And useful. So uh, right. we're going to build... Um, a flashlight application that has two screens. One is a nice red um, to keep that visual purple safe in your eyes uh, when you turn it on at night. And then uh, you can switch over to a green one too, which is probably going to be a little bit lighter. And that's what we're going to build today. So you can see that we're going to be working with one simple component. Um, besides the activity and the views, we're also going to be using a button. And then, um, if you remember back to the uh, vocabulary, um, actually, can anybody answer what uh, what I may be using from the from the vocabulary discussion to switch between these two screens? Everybody's saying intent. Good, good. I didn't I didn't put anybody to sleep during that spiel. That's good. <laughs> that we know of.